Waterfowl hunting, two words that immediately bring visions of frigid early morning boat rides under the moon and stars, throwing out decoys to form that perfect spread, and calling in those first groups of birds as you count down the minutes to legal shooting time. It also makes you think of that special bond between the hunter and his dog. Waiting the shallows with an ever watchful eye toward the sky and limits of ducks in the blind. But many people completely overlook another style of waterfowling, a result of a state with large tracts of agricultural fields combined with large amounts of lakes, ponds, rivers, and wetlands, creating a clash between farmers wanting to protect their fields and huge numbers of migrating birds looking for a meal, creating an opportunity for world-class waterfowl hunting. No waders required. With this style of hunting, boats and floating decoys are traded for trailers filled with huge numbers of decoys and layout blinds. Competition between outfitters, while friendly, is often intense, with nationally known guides like Brad Allback fending off challenges from up and coming outfitters like the Goose Reapers and Red Dirt Waterfowlers. And if you're going to make it in the world of Oklahoma waterfowling, you better have a confidence every bit as big as your spread. Everybody knows Brad. We all know Brad, so. We're uh, setting the deeks out. You got them? You got the birds? 30 straight days of killing. <laughs> Haven't been skunked yet. Typical Alba. <laughs> Typical Alba. <laughs> getting the deeks set up, and we're going to get in the blinds and go shoot. Once the spread's all out and legal shooting time has arrived, every waterfowler is looking for that arrival of the first group of birds. Hopefully, a sign that the day is going to be a good hunt. And often faster than the birds from the first volley can be collected, you're already trying to work in the next group of birds. A result of the many hours of scouting and planning that a guide has already put into the hunt before anybody else even arrived. Any guide worth the bands on his lanyard has already formulated in his mind a plan for the day's hunt. What we're looking at here is we've got about 50,000 birds in this area, and this isn't exactly the X. They've been in here a little bit before. The X is going to be just to the east of us. Um, we've got another group of hunters about a mile uh, back to the south going to kind of shoot these birds. And so what we're looking to do is pick up these groups of 15s and 20s and 50s uh, that can't get in over here on the X, and they peel back and they're working this little area here. Um, and then those guys banging, we're going to keep birds, keep birds moving all day. So we should have a constant flight of birds over our decoys and seeing us all day long. But all too often, no matter how much work the guide has put into the hunt, the birds don't react as you're expecting, shaking his confidence and making him question, what are we doing wrong? So begins the changing of the spread, the rebrushing in of the blinds, and looking for who's peeking out of the blind. Sometimes adversity is the weather itself. Heavy fog or heavy snow make it hard for the birds to find your spread. Or mornings of record-breaking cold, like mornings of minus seven degrees, creating new challenges for both the hunter and the cameraman to keep the equipment operational. But the numb toes and frozen fingers are quickly forgotten when birds start to arrive. It doesn't matter if they come in pairs, singles, 
or small groups. The excitement is still there. But what every hunter is hoping for is a rival of the big flocks. With their cup wings and their acrobatic displays, and what every waterfowler strives for, setting them in the deep. And there's nothing more exhilarating than when the birds come out of the fog, like ghosts of the darkness, to drop right into the decoys. Okay, boys, get up and get yourself. Feet up back! And Brad Albeck cannot get scoped! Even though with a bad luck crew, 